Towards the end of Avengers Endgame, minor spoilers ahead friends, Captain America did something we all knew was eventually inevitable. He lifted Thor's hammer Mjolnir, using it to fight against Thanos in the final epic conflict of the film. Steve Rogers proved he was worthy, and he's come a long way since he was able to make the hammer budge during Avengers Age of Ultron. It's something that the hero has proven to do multiple times in the comics as well, once in 1988 in the Mighty Thor issue 390, in 2011's Fear Itself, in 2017's Secret Empire by the real cap, and plenty of other times in alternate universes and what if stories. But that got many people thinking, who else could potentially be worthy of wielding Thor's hammer? And I guess more importantly, who never will be? While anything could happen in the future of the MCU, we've journeyed into hypothetical land once again to give you our picks for the top 10 strongest Avengers who will never be able to lift Thor's hammer. And really, I mean, they're all strong. They're Avengers after all people. We'll be looking at both the MCU and the comics since there's only a handful of people who have lifted Molnir in the panels over the years. Let's get to it. Spider-Man. Let's start off our list with one of Marvel's most beloved characters, and one of the most endearing of Avengers members, Spider-Man. Spider-Man may be a character who could arguably find himself lifting Mjolnir in the MCU one day, but when it comes to the comics, it seems a little more unlikely that the web slinger would find himself worthy. That is simply because of his opinion of himself. While his actions might scream worthy, Peter has always struggled a lot with guilt. He devotes a lot of his time feeling guilty over things, things that were either directly or indirectly connected to his doing. Like that one time that Loki owed him a favor and then Peter ended up using it over a hundred issues later to bring back an instant civilian back to life because they had died in an accident that he indirectly influenced. Loki was like, alright dude, if this is really what you want to waste your wish on, cool. It's like Spider-Man is constantly a cautionary tale, in which the tragedies of his life prevent him from ever gaining personal happiness unless, you know, he's serving society for the better. Peter often doesn't feel worthy about himself, and self-doubt never really pays off well in the comics overall. No, does it? Looking at you, Thanos. Looking at you. And at number 9, Two Gun Kid. Two Gun Kid, a character known for having two guns and kind of looking like a kid, was a short-lived Avenger, who joined the team in 1978 and Avengers issue 174. Two Gun Kid is a time traveler from the 19th century who joined as a reserve member, and prior to that in Avengers issue 147 two years prior he was given an honorary status for the team. He time traveled and fought with the Avengers once then decided to take a tour of the country with Hawkeye, of all people, and then kind of made some appearances here and there before going back into the past. That didn't last though because he'd come back to the present and work alongside She-Hulk. All in all, he is a character who is such a blip on the radar in the Avengers history that we highly doubt Mjolnir would even recognize his existence at all. And yes, that is my argument and I'm sticking to it. And at number 8, Wolverine. Wolverine was briefly in Avengers in 2005 as part of the new Avengers team, joining in issue 6 of that series. He's been on a few Avengers squads over the years including the Avengers Unity Squad, and even managed to juggle being an Avenger and an X-Men member at the same time. Currently he's a member of the Savage Avengers and the X-Men. So why would he not be deemed worthy? Well, for one, there's that attitude of his. His catchphrase is literally, I'm the best there is at what I do, but what I do best isn't very nice. Second, Logan, while being a complex and dynamic character, is ultimately a product of the tough anti-hero trope that emerged after the Vietnam War in American pop culture. He uses deadly force often, which makes it questionable as to whether he'd qualify as worthy, despite, you know, generally fighting for good. And at number 7, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch in the comics would definitely have a tough time with the whole being worthy requirement, but that is a whole Pandora's box that we ain't touching in this video. Instead, let's take a look at the version from the MCU, a character who initially was a villain but then then joined the Avengers at the end of Age of Ultron alongside her brother Quicksilver, who shortly after met his untimely end. Wanda wants to do the right thing, but until she has a better grasp over her powers, that might be a tad difficult. Take a look at the Lagos controversy, which happened at the beginning of Captain America's Civil War. It's a prime example of that. When Crossbones triggered his suicide vest hoping to explode himself and Steve Rogers, Wanda used her powers to pull him out of Steve's range, but in doing so destroyed buildings and killed innocent bystanders, those bystanders being Wakandan humanitarian workers. Something that was a major catalyst for the Sokovia Accords, which would establish a UN panel to oversee and control the superpowered team. Over time, perhaps Wanda's story might take her in a direction that is arguably more worthy, but who knows? I mean, we're just happy that she's getting her own show. I mean, yeah, yeah, it is with Vision, but still, little victories, you guys. Just Vision stayed ahead. And at 6, Black Widow. Cause she's dead now. 
But actually, friends, Black Widow is a character who is constantly in conflict with her past. And with the MCU version in Avengers Endgame, Marvel Studios tried to emphasize more of that internal struggle that Natasha was having before she met her untimely end. While it seems likely we'll be seeing her solo feature take place in the past, there's still the odd chance now that the multiverse has opened up that we might see a different version of Natasha who is considerably more worthy to Molnir's standards. But don't get your hopes up. Marvel Studios is very adamant that she is dead. With party poopers. And at 5, Hawkeye from the MCU. Prior to coming back into the Avengers fold, Hawkeye had gone full blown Ronin and was running around the globe brutally murdering criminals as a way to fill his ever growing void from losing his family. Yeah, they are criminals, but. Damn, Clint, gotta be so ruthless. I mean, perhaps prior to this, had he kept up his good shield behavior, he would have had a somewhat possible chance of being considered worthy by the hammer. But let's be honest, post Mohawk days, not so sure about that. Moving on to number four, US Agent. US Agent was part of the Avengers in the comics as part of the post Inferno recruits between 1989 and 1990. The government had appointed him to the West Coast Avengers team in 1989, and he proved to be a major dick, <laughs> causing many of the team members to quit because of. It. US Agent's history of being a dick is a pretty detailed one, actually. US Agent, aka John Walker, first appeared in the comics as a supervillain named Super Patriot in Captain America issue 323 in 1986. The whole purpose of this character's creation was to counter the message in Captain America's comics about patriotism being entirely good. It was the late 80s in America after all. Walker was described by his creators as someone who, I quote, embodied patriotism in a way that Captain America didn't, a patriotic villain, more realistic and more pragmatic. Now, years later during the Heroes Return event, he briefly appeared in the third volume of Captain America in a story titled American Nightmare, in which he tried to steal an experimental jet plane. Now, to be fair, he was under the control of villain Nightmare, but really, after everything else he had done as a villain and as a corrupted hero in the past, I wouldn't put behavior like that past him. All in all, Molnir says no. Up next, number three, Namor. Ah, yes, another character who is too big of an asshole to ever wield Thor's hammer. Except the difference between Namor and US Agent is that Namor is actually quite likable. Controversial opinion? Don't come at me. Namor the Submariner had joined the team in 1985 in Avengers issue 262. Namor is largely considered to be the first known comic book anti hero, being a short fused character who also had a penchant for seeking vengeance when he felt he was wronged. He's pulled off stunts like trying to invade Wakanda before, but also fought alongside Captain America and the original Android Human Torch against Nazis during World War II. He's aided heroes, he's antagonized them. He's a beautiful array of all things at once. But when compared against the likes of Steve Rogers' nobility, well, Namor doesn't really hold a candle to that, does he? And let's be real, Molnir ain't no sword and hat. It's not gonna spend a hot second debating whether Namor's good outweighs his bad. Moving on to number two, Sentry. Sentry was a recruit of the 2015 New Avengers team, a group that was formed when there was a mass breakout of the supervillain prison, The Raft. Sentry, along with Wolverine, Luke Cage, and Echo, all found themselves as part of the team over the first 11 issues of this new series. But how could the man with the power of one million suns not be worthy of lifting something that arguably probably isn't as powerful as he is. Well, that's because of his alter ego, who is also his arch enemy, the Void. Void is the dark entity that lives within Sentry as a side effect of his powers. Now, Marvel now, the two have actually fully merged, making him one of the most powerful mortal characters in the comics. Still, having an evil half probably doesn't help much in the worthy department. And finally, in at number one, Hank Pym. Oh, Hank. Hank Pym is a character who has done a whole lot of bad crap over the years, much of which can be blamed on his poor mental health, which is pretty unfortunate. Hank was one of the original Avengers, joining the team in its very first issue in 1963. When it comes to his laundry list of questionable actions, we honestly don't know where to begin. So I guess maybe from the start? <laughs> Although I warn you guys, this Coles Notes version is, is really, it's, it's shortened quite a bit. <laughs> Poor Hank. So once upon a time, Hank wanted to create a living robot, and in his attempts, he created Ultron. You guys know who Ultron is. Ultron excelled in intelligence levels compared to Hank, rebelled against him and the Avengers, wiped Hank's memories after he had a nervous breakdown about it, and then was eventually defeated. The Avengers looked into Ultron's past, discovered that Hank was responsible, and Hank descended into breakdown number two. And then he became Yellow Jacket. Yellow Jacket was the product of a schizophrenic breakdown. He kidnapped Janet, acted like a complete dick, and then was later revealed to be Hank after all. As time passed, he began to feel more and more inadequate and snapped during a battle with a foe who had surrendered, attacking her. He was then court martialed by the Avengers, then came up with a wacky plan to trick them into thinking that they needed him still by attacking them and then saving the day. Janet was like, 
yo, you're being crazy, and lost his shit. And then he proceeded to hit her, which became one of the most controversial moments in comics to date. Hank and Janet would then split up, and Hank would become a scientific advisor to the West Coast Avengers, and then eventually try to commit suicide. I could keep going, but I would prefer not to. Currently, he's merged with Ultron into a cyborg, but really it's more so Ultron wearing Hank's skin as a costume. It's a whole can of worms that we will not open up in this video. Sorry, everybody. You bet your ass that you will never see Michael Douglas doing that in the MCU, though. All right, there we have it, friends. What other Avengers do you think are not worthy of wielding Molnir? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know all your thoughts and feels. If you dug this video, spread that love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for more videos just like this one. In the meantime though, thanks for watching friends, I'll catch you on the next one.